Let's begin here at the front. I'm gonna bring you down and let you see there are paint cracks here. This front end has been previously redone. We can see that. There are other flaws down in here. See, look at this area. Take a look at the window frame on the car. Coming from the back to the passenger side with a horrible scratch. Here we have the last area of paint damage that has to be fixed. All along there on the bottom of the driver's door area. Interestingly, no damage on the passenger side like that. I suspect this car was usually used by only one person. Here we have a very minor issue. I'm looking at this wheel center. I'll show you what's wrong with it. As you can see, there are only three pieces instead of five on the back to hold it. Here you'll see a problem that we are going to be dealing with. One of the stripping has a hole. This is the driver's side door. Another little problem spot. Driver's side rear window. You'll notice right here there's a gap between the driver's door window and driver's side rear window. Now looking inside the DB7, we get the instrument cluster there. You can see right above it, gray leather. That was all covered in black gunk when we got the car. A non-hardening something that somebody put up there to try to make it stay in position. It has since been cleaned up and repositioned with our quality contact cement. We have a video on the channel about how to do that. And it needs some recoloring in that area, but that's about it and that will be fixed for there. We come down, looking at the instrument cluster. I should have recorded that when I was driving at home. It was so ridiculously dark, I could not even drive by it. And since then, that has been fixed. Of the steering column cover, you'll see that post. That post happens to be, the post is supposed to have the knob for controlling your dimming for your instrument lights. By removing just two screws, which are in this area down on the bottom, I could remove that whole piece, get to the potentiometer, take it out, take it over to the workbench, and work it several times and use the multimeter, and it's 100% working again. Beautiful gauges at night. I'll show you that in an upcoming portion of the video. Here you can see the replacement knob we got from Aston Martin. Here we have a DB7 parts manual reproduction showing us the center console area where you have all your controls for your climate. This shows you the veneer removed. In the case of this car, all we had to do was take the little bezel from around the radio, pull that forward, set it aside, and then you can pull out the veneer piece. It has only four posts and you just gently pry it out. And once that's out of the way, you'll find out this knob, this knob, this knob, and this knob are moved. They just pull right off, which will release the plastic housing behind them. And then you find your lighting area. Instead of finding lights burned out, what we found is what's not shown in the drawing here on each side there was an anti-squeak or anti-rattle piece. Like a thin piece of felt with adhesive on it. On each side though, it, over time it had fallen down and it was covering up the light bulbs. So the only thing wrong so that we couldn't have climate control lights was that the anti-rattle had fallen down. We moved it back into place, reassembled everything, put it back in, 
And as you'll see, it looks beautiful now. There's no glove box, so it looks like there might be one, but there isn't. Not in the traditional sense. There is a locking compartment at your armrest between the two front seats. However, we did not get keys with it like we were supposed to. As you can see, we have a different lock here. This brand new one came from Aston Martin also. And you can now lock the center armrest, which is effectively the only glove box you have in the vehicle. So the only way we could get the keys was to buy a new lock. Well, we got keys and a new lock, and that's all taken care of. On the passenger side, you have a seat back release handle right there. Oops, it's missing on the driver's side. Here we have something that we have already fixed that we will show you in the parts book and explain how we did it. Here we have the drawing of the door parts. That in particular right there is our vent. It has tab on each end. Plugs into the hole in the door. However, over the years the leather's probably shrunk just a little bit and so it would not plug in here and stay put. Simple solution, on the end of the door opening, I added one layer, this belt's come in two layers, one layer of a belt that I cut to fit the area with some contact cement, added in, then pushed the vent back in place, and it's beautifully fixed ever since. Down in the footwell, you can see that these pedals are in terrible shape. We know from the Aston Martin technical website that it was built with rubber pedals. We're going to backdate it to On rubber pedals. On each side of the car, there are door handles. You notice the black piece in the center of that door handle, that's your electric lock. If you push back on it, it's supposed to lock not just that door handle, but it should lock the passenger one at the same time. Likewise, it should lock the gas cap cover, and the trunk. None of that happens. Neither does the trunk switch you are looking at right there work for opening the trunk. We think all of these relate to the central locking module not being functional on this car. Hear the rattling noise? That is a squirrel cage fan that needs attention. Here you have something we will fix probably last damage in the headliner in one spot. Looking in the trunk of the DV7, we have the cover for the convertible top being put down. Very nice shape. It's got a little bit of dirt on it. We got to clean off. It looks like polishing compound. Not a big deal. This just happens to be the bag for the cover for the car. If it's outdoors, we have an all-weather cover we keep it in. So that's what that's for. The rest of this, we need to talk. Here you have an audio installation. It is not factory entirely. We're not sure what all was changed, but we do know that this portion is not factory. On each end are MDF pieces underneath there. They were put on by whoever had done the installation. Instead of drilling pilot holes, they just drilled into the MDF. If you drill into MDF and with screws with no pilot holes, what ends up happening is the MDF splits. So we've already replaced each end piece so that it works out appropriately. They also made this piece definitely not factory. Hard for me to get out. It's bendable. Looks like it's ABS plastic with this material on top of it, but that's not factory. And now you get into the trunk well area. This piece is a factory piece, dirty right now, but you notice they chopped this up to fit it under here. We'll have to see what we're gonna do with that. We've got a good one that we've purchased. We also have our battery, etc., over here. 
and you have the good version of this right there and you have a trunk well with no spare tire so the car was built without a spare tire although just immediately before this they would have had a spare and a folding piece that went over the spare and the spare would have been here and this would not be here however if you were able to see all of this, and I took the camera down, you see this is all broken along here, and somebody has tried to sort of repair it. It's in terrible shape. This piece doesn't belong here. There are other things wrong here. So we are seriously thinking about removing that whole area, putting a bespoke setup, and putting a spare, because I was able to get a correct spare wheel and tire for the car, and instead put the spare back in, and reconstruct this so it's beautiful and goes in keeping with the car instead of what's going on here. Missing from the car in this area, there are fasteners. And there's only one fastener on this side holding on our taillight cover. So we've got to get new fasteners here. We're working on that. And we are also working on the other issue. When I open the trunk here, there are no lights at all. The lights are in the trunk. We know that they work. We've tested them. The problem is we believe right down in this area, underneath this fuse box on the bracket is where the relay that runs those tail lights is. We believe the relay is bad because the lights do in fact work when we test them. So we think the relay has gone out there and we're going to have to replace it which as you can see is going to be a little interesting but that's probably what's wrong with our trunk lights as you'll notice here there's a working trunk light now and that is because in this latch mechanism there was a switch that was not in place. here we have the passenger side rear wheel you'll see there's a little damage to the paint on that wheel mm -hmm. 